In our last lesson, we talked at great length how the Nazi dictatorship was unfurling in Germany under the leadership of Hitler. Now, from the very beginning, Hitler was of the opinion that it were the Treaty of Versailles terms that had reduced Germany to the dust. And Hitler was very much against the Allied powers who had written down the terms of the Treaty of Versailles. Now, the Treaty of Versailles was signed in 1918, as we know, to bring the state of war between Germany and the Allied powers to an end. And at this point of time, one of the terms of the Treaty of Versailles also mentioned that the League of Nations would be instituted. Now, the League of Nations was founded in 1920 to maintain world peace. But Hitler was completely against all the terms of the Treaty of Versailles. And so, Hitler rejected the terms of the Treaty of Versailles. And in fact, he also pulled out of the League of Nations in 1933. Now, the League of Nations was a peacekeeping organization as we just mentioned. And right after the end of the First World War, when the world was ravaged in the truest sense of the term, many of the warring nations had entered the League of Nations. Initially, Germany did not enter the League of Nations, but over the years, it was also a part of the League of Nations. But finally, Hitler rejected all the terms of the Treaty of Versailles and in 1933, he pulled out of the League of Nations. Now, one of the terms of the Treaty of Versailles also mentioned German demilitarization of the Rhineland. Now, the Rhineland was demilitarized till this point of time. Germany did not have its military forces stationed at Rhineland. But just a while ago, we mentioned that Hitler had flouted and rejected all the terms of the Treaty of Versailles. And so, Hitler reoccupied the Rhineland in 1936. This map here shows you the region that was known as the Rhineland. And it lay between Germany and France. And Hitler reoccupied this region in 1936. Subsequently, he also wrested Sudetenland from Czechoslovakia in 1938. So, all the German speaking population in this region that was known as the Sudetenland now came under the control of Germany. But there were different populations living in this region. And Hitler eventually went on to controlling this entire country. And so all these were ways in which Hitler was now defying the terms of the Treaty of Versailles. And he was also posing a challenge to the Allied powers. Now, Hitler was an Austrian by birth, but he came to power as the dictator of Germany. From the very beginning, he had this intention of joining Austria and Germany. And this political unification of Germany and Austria was achieved through the Ansklers in 1938. Hitler now invaded Austria in order to politically unite Germany and Austria. And it was the Ansklers that brought together or politically unified Germany and Austria in 1938. Before proceeding with this lesson, let me ask you a question. With which country was Germany unified through the Ansklers in 1938? Was Germany unified with Hungary, France, Austria or Switzerland? Well, the correct answer is Austria. The Ansklers of 1938 unified Germany and Austria. And this is because Hitler was actually an Austrian by birth. Now, I am going to tell you something that will take you by surprise. We know that England was a part of the Allied powers and the Allied powers were fighting against Germany in the First World War. So, these were warring nations. That is to say, England and Germany were warring nations. 
But England believed that the terms of the Treaty of Versailles were too harsh and unfair on Germany. In fact, England also had sympathy for the German masses when the German economy had completely collapsed. And so, Hitler's imperialist policy had England's tacit support. England did not overtly support Hitler's imperialist foreign policy. Instead, England had tacit or unsaid support for Hitler's imperialist policy. By imperialist policy, we mean that Hitler was invading various regions and bringing everything under the control of Germany. We just mentioned how he had occupied Rhineland, Sudetenland and even invaded Austria. So all these were Hitler's imperialist foreign policy and in this way Hitler was trying to increase the expanse of Germany and make his power felt in international politics and all of it had England's tacit support. Now there was another major reason why England had unsaid support for Hitler. This is because England was afraid of another invasion from Germany and in order to prevent or thwart any kind of German invasion England actually supported Hitler's foreign policy in the initial stages. Oftentimes, we make many errors with the decisions we make. We make wrong choices and at that point of time, our friends, our family members or our well-wishers show us the correct options. We weigh all the options in order to arrive at a better understanding of something, in order to make a correct choice. But Hitler was not a person to acknowledge someone else's opinions. In our last lesson, we talked about how Hitler had assigned the responsibility of recuperating the German economy to the German economist and banker, Homer Schott. Now, Homer Schott was of the opinion that the German economy had not recuperated to that extent to actually undertake rearmament projects. Now, rearmament projects were costing the German economy a lot of resources. And so, Homer Schott, who was the president of the Rates Bank at this point of time, advised Hitler against investing in rearmament. But Hitler most definitely did not listen to him. And so, Hitler now compelled him to leave. And Homer Schott had to resign as the president of the Reichstag in January 1939. So it was Hitler's say that was supposed to be final in Germany. Any kind of opinions that contradicted his, any kind of dissident voice was not at all acknowledged or taken into consideration by Hitler. So, Homer Schott now resigned from his position in 1939. A point that we need to understand from this is that the German economy during this time had not completely recovered. The German economy was functioning through huge amounts of loans because the German economy was completely devastated till a decade or two back. How can the economy become fully strengthened by this time? It was not possible. It was in the process of recovering. And so it would have been advisable for Hitler to not undertake rearmament projects at this time. Now let us look at this map of Europe and try to understand why certain things were happening. Here you can look at Germany and here was the erstwhile region of East Prussia. Now, East Prussia was under the control of Germany, but there was the Danzig Corridor in Poland between Germany and East Prussia. And it was because of the Danzig Corridor that Hitler was not able to unite Germany and East Prussia. And so he thought it would be best for him to invade Poland and get control of this region to unite Germany and East Prussia. And to this end, Germany invaded Poland on September 1, 1939. And September 1, 1939, 
the German invasion of Poland officially marked the beginning of the Second World War. So here is a newspaper cutting that reads Germany attacks Poland and this German invasion of Poland was actually the reason why the World War II broke out. Poland was a very strategic ally of Britain and when Poland was invaded by Germany, Britain immediately declared an official ultimatum to Germany. It declared that Germany had to recede from Poland, that Germany had to give up its invasion of Poland. But the only response that Germany had to this was a silence. And so, now the Allied powers came to the defense of Poland. And to this end, Great Britain and France declared war on Germany on September 3, 1939. So, by the 3rd of September 1939, the World War II had broke out in full fledged between Germany, Poland, Great Britain and France. Hitler was hungry for more and more power and recognition. He wanted to establish himself as a great leader in international politics. Now the Berlin Pact was signed on September 27, 1940 among Germany, Italy and Japan. Now a binding factor was Germany, Italy and Japan were all countries that were driven by aggressive imperialistic and expansionist policies. Germany, Italy and Japan were all ruled by single leaders at this point of time. It was the Nazi party that was ruling Germany and it was the fascist party that was ruling Italy. And all these three powers had joined hands and the Berlin Pact actually elucidated the relationship that Germany, Italy and Japan were supposed to share in the course of World War II. So the signing of the Berlin Pact actually collaborated or joined three major powers of the Axis powers who were fighting against the Allied powers in World War II. Now at this point of time after the signing of the Berlin Pact, puppet regimes were established over large parts of Europe and these puppet regimes were all under the control of Hitler. So Hitler was controlling large parts of Europe after the World War II had broken out. Now here we will be introduced to a new policy that Hitler followed. Hitler wanted the German population to populate several regions of Europe, which is why he wanted more and more living space for the Germans. But how do you think was it possible for him to expand and increase the living space for the Germans? That could only be done by invading several regions and territories. And to this end, Hitler now went on to establishing himself and invading several parts in Eastern Europe. Now, this concept of increasing the living space for Germans was known as Lebensraum. Now, the concept of Lebensraum or living space served as a crucial component in Hitler's designs in extending his power over Eastern Europe. Now this map shows you the entire region that Hitler wanted to control under this policy of Lebensraum. Now how was this policy of Lebensraum being actualized by Hitler? This was being done through the practice of settler colonialism. By settler colonialism, we mean that a settler group goes to a new region and in that new region, the culture, the lives or even the people as a whole are completely exterminated. And after exterminating the population of a region, the settler group now establishes itself in that region. The settler group now populates that region. And Hitler was doing the same thing in several parts of Eastern Europe. 
It was now going to several regions in Eastern Europe, exterminating the entire population there and the Germans were now starting to leave there. So in this way, Hitler sought to increase the living space for the German population. So the point we just mentioned is that the practice of settler colonialism is what Hitler tried to implement when he invaded Soviet Union in June 1941 in Operation Barbarossa. Now Operation Barbarossa was a very deadly operation through which Hitler tried to invade Soviet Union and ravaging battles were fought in the Russian cities of Leningrad, Moscow and Stalingrad. Now this map shows you that this was the German occupied region and this was the Soviet Union. And on account of this Operation Barbarossa in these major Russian cities, severe battles were fought. Hitler was trying to invade and control all of Eastern Europe. Firstly, to make his power and presence felt in the eastern part of Europe and at the same time to populate this region with the German masses. Now, in this Operation Barbarossa and the deadly battles that were fought, the Nazi troops were initially quite successful. They killed millions of people. Around 5 million soldiers were killed. Around 3 million people were captured as prisoners of war. And many millions of civilians were also killed. The Red Army troops, which were the troops of the Soviet Union were very powerful at the same time. Though the Nazis gained great success initially, they were severely combated by the Red Army. Now the Red Army was very well equipped and it made sure to not leave any stones unturned in combating the Nazi forces. Now during this German invasion of Soviet Union took place one of the deadliest battles in human history which was the Battle of Stalingrad. Now this Battle of Stalingrad was a major turning point in the politics in Eastern Europe because it was in the Battle of Stalingrad that the Red Army troops had defeated the Nazis. So much so that the Red Army troops actually hounded the Nazis away from Eastern Europe and they saw that the Nazis were all sent back to Berlin. Now this came as a crushing and a humiliating defeat to Hitler because Hitler believed that he would be able to control Soviet Union but he was absolutely defeated in the Battle of Stalingrad. Now the Battle of Stalingrad also established Soviet Union as the most important and the powerful force in the eastern part of Europe. Now following the Operation Barbarossa, Hitler had made certain very serious tactical failures. All the Nazi troops were sent to the eastern part to the Soviet Union to fight against the Red Army troops. And this actually exposed the western part of Germany to British aerial bombing. And because of this British aerial bombing, the western part of Germany now suffered huge casualties. In the initial stage, the United States of America was reluctant to enter and join the Second World War because it had learned from the ravages caused by the First World War. After the First World War, the US economy was also severely suffering because of the huge toll that the war had taken on them. And so, US was reluctant to enter this war that was happening in faraway Europe. But we learned about the Berlin Pact and in the Berlin Pact, Italy, Germany and Japan had joined hands together against the Allied powers. Now if you think of it geographically, Germany and Italy are located in Europe. But Japan is located in far away Asia and it was not possible for these three countries to be united politically and geographically.
So Japan was not able to get a huge amount of resources and help from Italy or Germany. And so Japan at this point of time was trying to establish its power in the eastern part of the world. Now Japan is an island in the Pacific Ocean and close to it lies the United States of America. Japan thought that it would now invade the United States of America and gain control over the US. And to this end, Japan now launched a military strike at the US naval base in Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. Now, this was also a very deadly military strike at this US naval base in Pearl Harbor. And because of Japan launching this airstrike in USA, this date that is December 7, 1941 marks the day when US now entered World War II. Now this was a world war in the twist sense of the term because the war was no longer restricted to Europe only. We have already learned that Japan was a part of the war and Asia invariably was drawn into the war. But now the United States of America was also a part of World War II. Now let us briefly look at what was happening in the United States of America itself. We have learned about how the Wall Street crash of 1929 triggered the Great Depression that happened between 1929 and 1932. The US economy had severely suffered because of the Great Depression. In fact, the German economy was also suffering because of the Great Depression because US had taken back all the help that it had extended to Germany in the form of loans. But in the years following the Great Depression, the US economy was in the process of recovering and very swiftly so. But how do you think was this made possible? Well, all thanks to the US President Franklin D. Roosevelt who was in power from 1933 to 1945. Now, when Roosevelt was the President of the United States of America, he introduced various programs of relief reform and recovery and in the truest sense of the term the US economy was recovering from this period because through several executive orders and federal legislations he had introduced various programs under the New Deal. Now the New Deal introduced different programs be that on the industrial front, on the agricultural front and these programs were actually meant to provide employment to the masses who were rendered unemployed during the Great Depression. And in this way the US industries were also recovering. USA was once again able to produce more and more goods and commodities and trade activities also increased in the country. All in all, the US economy was recovering in the truest sense of the term. And during this time, that is in the initial years of 1940, while the European powers were embroiled in the Second World War, the USA was able to boost its economy, to boost its production units. And in this way, USA now became a power to be reckoned with in world politics. But Japan was also not willing to recede. It was also wanting to establish itself as a very powerful country in Eastern Europe. And the war kept on prolonging. The war took a complex turn of events in which various countries throughout the world got involved in Second World War. Japan had also invaded the Asian countries of India and Myanmar. So many events together were happening in the course of the Second World War and finally US detonated two atomic bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki on August 6 and August 9, 1945 respectively. So here you can see the mushroom cloud that formed over the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki when the US detonated two atomic bombs here. And this put an end to the Second World War. 
Though the Second World War came to an end, it had completely ravaged almost the entire world. The entire Europe was ravaged and major territorial reconfigurations were happening. All these countries, resources and economy were going down the drain. And while we discuss the impact of the Second World War, we should definitely mention that it was Hitler's aggressive expansionist policies that actually triggered the Second World War. Because we learned that it was the German invasion of Poland in 1939 that triggered and led to the outbreak of the Second World War. With this, we come to an end of our discussion on Hitler's aggressive imperialist and expansionist policies. We learned how Hitler was not to stop. He kept on annexing and controlling several parts in Europe. He established several puppet regimes and all those places were under his control. He actually began the Second World War by invading Poland. Having talked at great length, about the ambitious expansionist policies that Hitler had. In our subsequent lesson, we will be learning about how people were living in Hitler's Germany. That is to say, we will be focusing on the ideology that the Nazi party was founded on. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it's rewarding too. So register for free now.